live. It's Saturday night. It's kind of an interesting live because I'm way up here and Zeb's hiding behind the bar stools. Jamie's on a stool. I'm no, I'm just taller than you, Jamie. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I am going to be working on this chest here. I have already started. You can see there's mint chip painted right here because I'm going to need to do two coats of that and then we're going to stamp just that area. Then we'll be painting this outside part white. We'll see how far we get to that. And then I'm kind of cheating on the top. I'm using layered chocolate to make it look like a faux stain. And while I'm painting, Zeb's going to show you our thrift haul. I'll show you the thrift haul and then I'll come back and I'll show you what Jamie's been doing. If you watch the video I posted, we didn't get it up until a few hours ago, about five hours ago. You saw some of these things, but we didn't really go over pricing and we didn't show you everything or tell you about it. So we're going to go in depth and talk about that a little bit more. So this chest was $30 and when it's complete, I'll sell it for at least $200. We'll see. It depends on how cool it is. It's actually rather large. Usually I don't sell my chest for quite that much. But this one is large and it's really cool. We'll show you the feet here in a little bit. It's got really fun feet on it. So it is solid wood. It's made out of pine, which that's fine. That's, it's actually a pretty good quality pine. It's not real knotty or, or twisting or warped or anything. Someone took a lot of care putting it together and, and uh, seaming the wood together. So it's in really good shape. It's got a few scratches on okay, top. Some kids beat the heck out of this thing. This <laughs> Someone danced the cha-cha on top. Yeah, so I'm doing like a, it's not a faux stain, I'm just painting it brown, but it will look similar to a stained finish. When you're all done. Because Are we going to have time to get to that? I don't know. So this was $30. Usually we don't pay that much for chest, but it didn't need any mechanical work or anything like that. It was sturdy, ready to go. I'm like, I'm like hiding over here. And... and... <laughs> now you're on your tippy toes, now you know what it's like to be me. So it was sturdy and ready to go. And like Jamie said, I mean, we're going to sell it for about 200 once we're all done and Maybe probably get it mostly painted during this live video. She's going to keep painting. I'm going to start showing you. We didn't have any bar stools and haven't had any bar stools for quite a while. And I'm kind of picky. I only like bar stools with knobby bases. So like spindly bases because they look better painted and distressed in my opinion. So these are oak and we will paint them. They need a good scrub. They're a little bit on the shiny side. I think we're gonna milk paint them. This one was $5. It was in a different part of the store. And then we found the other two matching stools. They were $8 Which a piece. Which is usually what I pay at DI. That's what they charge is eight. Yeah. We got lucky on the one. They're sturdy. They don't need any sturdying up. And Jamie was like, hey, this one's five. Can I get the other two for five as well? And the guy's like, how about we do all three for eight? She's like, no, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> I'll take the one mislabeled. So we've got three of those. I'm going to set them down so I can show you other things. But these refinished, what are you selling the bar stools for? Um, $38. $38 a piece. Yes, I paint them and then with a stencil, they're $38.95. We've been going on kind of a rolling pin drought. But we've got this here. This one's actually, the rolling pin is metal. It's got a little bit of rust, so we'll probably paint this more for decor. We'll paint these handles up, although they're kind of a light wood, which is in right now, so it's debatable. I don't know exactly yeah, where we're going to go with this. With Let me see. It's just metal, but it's got a little oh, bit of rust on it. I don't know. I don't know where you're going. You bought it. So I, it was my purchase. You know, I wonder if I could screw this apart. I might be able to screw this apart. And then fix the rust. We have that rust off stuff. But anyway, it was a dollar. So if I if I paint the handles and sell it as decor, it'll still be like ten bucks. This. So we could do real estate, not food safe. Yep. If you watched earlier's video, or the video from earlier, earlier's video. Uh, if you watched the video from earlier. You saw this, Jamie found this, it was $3 on the bin. We weren't, we're trying not to get as many smalls. We've been cleaning out the garage all week and we have a small item, small decor epidemic right now. Not because they haven't been selling, but because we've been buying way too many, mostly to show you guys what we would pick and find, but also we, it's hard we to like pass it. up. Sometimes they're like a buck or two. We're like, yeah, grab that. <laughs> so what our plan is right now is we've already got a bunch of extra smalls, like everything we finished last week. If you watched our videos, 
in the basement and we're just gonna re restock from there. So right now I wanna get furniture done so I can have some furniture down in the basement. And then if we go out of town or whatever, this summer we have a lot going on, we don't have to worry about crazy stocking the shop. We've already got products ready to go. So this here was $3. We'll probably paint it apothecary or some sort of blue shade because it's already white and then distress that back through, probably wet distress because it's got a ton of detail on it. This would be something that would be good to mold if you were into doing that. I've yeah, got a video that. on how to do that. Actually, Caitlin, I think we're almost out of mold putty. Just if you're on, no, just throwing I that out there. No, I did order some more. I don't know. <laughs> but this is, uh, this would be a fun little item. What would you sell this for, Jamie? I was let Jamie price things. She knows best um, on that. Probably like twelve ninety five. Okay. All right. Jamie knows best. She does. Only on certain things. We have so, our own things. So we found the hen and then spotted the rooster on the shelf. The rooster, Jamie said it was broken, but it's just got a crack. It's not actually split all the way oh, through. Oh, then I switch you spots. Okay, switching spots. Oh, so this guy here was a buck and the hen was a dollar. We've got a matching set. I might get around to painting these in this video. These ones here, mm, nine ninety five each. Nine ninety five each. Well, oh, they were made by different makers. They're they're a set, but this one was made by FP. Are they like? Candy? And this one looked. Oh no, FP on this one. They just did something crazy with like their signature like the second time around. It's not like manufactured. Yeah, FP made them, but did a different. Well, usually these are, these older ones are not molded. They're they're handmade typically. Mm -hmm. So you guys can see how brown this is getting. A lot of people will want to use gel stain, which gel stain looks a lot like brown paint to me, in my humble opinion. So I'm like, why not just use brown paint? So that's what I do. I just use brown paint. I'm not, once that dries, I'm not, I'll probably like use an extra fine sandpaper to smooth it out, but I'm not gonna do anything else to the top of that. That's it. All right. I got brown paint all over my hands. All right. So the red rooster, we thought he was resin, got him home, and that is a wood knot. So it is carved out of wood. It's going to get probably a white. I might not go white. I might do like an apothecary on this. <laughs> because if we do white and we just stress this back through, it's going to make it look all pinkish. Yeah, white. So pink. we'll probably do like a darker color on it. What about a black it. rooster? What about black rooster? Oh, we could do a black rooster. There's, and then distress the red through. That could be cool. That's like Jamie's school colors, red and black. Yeah, my high school colors. Throw back to high school there. This was a dollar. Anytime we can pick up cool little pots like this, it's it's a terracotta that's been painted or glazed or something. But anytime we can pick up a cool little pot like this, this for a buck especially, I mean, we'll put a plant in it and sell it for 10 or depending on how much the plant is. Fake plants are usually about 10 or 15 on their own. So it might go for as much as even like 20 if we put a plant in it. And let's see, is this, this looks like milk glass to me. It's not quite, eh, it's, it's like on the verge of milkiness. <laughs> I can't, well, I can't quite tell. It's pretty opaque. Yeah. It's but EO e. Brody Company, Cleveland, Usually they're not stamped. Yeah, it's been stamped. Cleveland, Ohio, USA under the sticker there. But it's got this fun scalloped edge. It'll look nice in the shop. We'll drop some flowers in it. This mint chip is like ancient. And we actually picked this last week and lost it. Yeah, and then we found it again. It was in the back of the truck under the seat. This was $3. I actually really love this style candlestick. And it's got some staining, like someone, some kid took a crayon and something pink spilled on it here. So we'll probably shellac that, block that in, and then paint it a bluish color because it's already like a creamy kind of white color there. So, and let's see. I think that's most of it for the thrift store haul. I also picked up this frame. Did you show my pot? I showed him the pot. Oh. So I picked up this frame. The frame was $1.50. And it had like this pre-mat thing. When I cut it out, I messed up and nicked it a little up here, but I figure I'll show you anyway. So this is this month's printable for the member group. And it's also a Corbel design. So you could technically print this out, cut that out with a, the scissors, 
trace that onto your wood and cut that out. And that's going to be one of our edited videos for the member group. I'm going to, I'm going to show you how to cut this out old school using just a handheld coping saw. And then also with a jigsaw, you could use a scroll saw, a band saw, all those tools would work to cut this out. So this is the outer portion. You cut two of these per corbel and then the inner and this fun scallop pokes up out of the center here and it'll look really cool. So I'm excited to build that and show, uh, show you in the member group what that looks like. So if you're not a channel member, click the link in the description of this video down below and it'll tell you all about it and the extras you get. But just wanted to show you it framed, painted this up. I painted this white so that you guys could kind of see that this has like some watercolor detail on it on the background. It's not if just... If you print it in color. Yeah, if you print it in color. If you print it in black and white, it kind of comes out gray. But that is, uh, that's uh, just so you could see that it's not just like plain white paper on there. Yeah. I don't, well this It has a safety, it's got a safety chain on that one. I just don't want to get paint on this. So I'm going to come around. Jamie's been painting. She's got a second coat of mint chip on there. Mint chip is the yeah, color. You guys probably haven't seen right. the feet. You want to show them the feet on this yep. one? Show you the feet down here on this. It's got these fun router details and then some uh, or fun, <laughs> fun <laughs> turn <just> detail <laughs> and then router detail on the edges. So it's not just like a straight piece of wood. Yeah. And if you're new to our channel, we're using DIY paint today. This is beadboard. This color in the middle is mint chip and the top is layered chocolate and you can buy all those at jamierayvintage.com. And we get asked this a lot. It's completely safe for us to be painting in the kitchen because this is all natural, no VOC paint. All right, where are you going next? I'm gonna set the camera up so that they can watch you paint while I answer some comments. Um, this is it, but it might be kind of boring. I'm are you gonna paint away. the front at all? Well, I have to, we're gonna stamp. So I'm gonna leave this portion until we're all done stamping and then I'm gonna carefully paint that. Okay. So I'm gonna just be painting right here for a second. You can go over there and talk to him. I'll be over there. I'll be over there in about three seconds. All right, I'll move the camera in like three seconds and, and show you guys. If you guys have questions about what I'm doing or about thrifting or anything, you can answer ask those while Deb's uh, working over there. So the color on the shutters above our cabinet, did we do, is that just Sweetie, Sweetie Jane? Sweetie Jane and Pantry Door Mix. Pantry Door like, Mix. If I am So correct. that is Sweet Pickens Milk Paint and Sweetie Jane and Pantry Door Mix. And if you're wondering what we're talking about, the shutters up there. It's a mix of milk paint, Sweetie Jane and Pantry Door. I'm gonna, I gotta get this angle here. All right, I'm bringing you back. I'm bringing them back around. Okay. You're not gonna be painting there very no, long. No, I'm just painting white, so I don't really know how exciting that is. <laughs> I gotta paint the back, but I won't do that while we're live. Hopefully, well, you could get a heat gun out and you could heat gun the mint chip so we can stamp it. Oh, yay. Huh. I don't know how to say the name. Jinx Nunu is what we're gonna go with. First live. Awesome. awesome. <laughs> You can tell we hang out together a lot. We say the same you thing. Know, awesome. We, we, we hang out all day together. And it's just right. for those of you that are wondering, I am going to paint the back of this chest because the back is finished. Also, it's the perfect size to use for a coffee table. And I generally, with chests, will paint back and front so that way if somebody wants to use it as a coffee table, they can. Everybody's saying hi and Hello. telling us about the stuff they found thrifting, which is awesome. I have a hard time shopping at regular stores. I was out shopping with my girlfriends today and I'm like, ooh, I don't pay full Sherry price. Williams. Hello, I'm going to paint my bedroom suite that I've had since 1983. What kind of paint should I use? And I, and, cause I want to sand it also. Sorry guys. Is it time for a cameo? No, Harrington. Sure, if you want, it's been a minute since you Harrington had a just got back. You should show him your bleached hair <laughs> for wrestling that didn't turn out so great. They can't see your head. Sorry. <laughs> You'll have to poke your head down into the camera. So, you Pam Clayton, the camera. Jamie, it's, I'm going to, hold on. I, we got distracted. I'm going to get back to your Sherry Williams, your question on what you should paint or what paint you should use. So, that's kind of tough. It depends on the finish you want to do on it. All three of the paints we use can be painted on most stuff. Like, this was pretty shiny, and we didn't do any prep other than clean it. You don't have to sand. If you want to do sanding, that's great. I would probably sand and then shellac so you don't get any tannins from wood coming back through when you go to paint. The thing about sanding it is, see how this is a little bit streaky? If you were to sand this to where it had more grip, then it would cover better. But because it's super shiny, it's definitely gonna take two coats. 
because there's a lot of resistance here. So it really depends on what kind of finish you're going on for, what kind of colors you so want. Your iPad's about to get painted. The the DIY white swan and like the beadboard, bead they cover really really well for whites. They're so pixelated and the clay base is so thick. If you don't want to be painting white all day, if you're going that color, they're going to be amazing. But this is uh, not self-leveling. No. So you will get brush strokes in it unless you wet your brush down or you can sand them off when you're done. So that's another thing to keep in mind. I like it to look hand painted. So when I'm doing this, I don't mind it. I do smooth out my brush strokes though. Oh, people are starting to get their paint pixie brushes from the sale oh, we good. had a week ago. I shipped out 250 packages by myself in like 30 hours this week. It was crazy. My shipping girl had her uh, wisdom teeth removed. Queen Bee Trending Home Finishes. Is the mold putty what you use to make molds for appliques with? Yes, yes. it is. So we sell the IOD molds, which are super finely detailed, but every now and then you'll have like a broken piece of detail that you need to make a mold for, or say you have something like this and you wanted to put this on something else, you could make a mold out of that and then and then uh, it's a two-part putty. We have it on the website, jamierayvintage.com. Just look up, just type in mold, M-O-L-D, and it'll bring it right up. So, in the search bar. Zeb, would you mind grabbing that heat gun and we'll heat gun this real quick? Or maybe Caitlin can link it in here if she's still watching. <laughs> I think she is. Oh, I'm way is. behind. Like, there's there's tons of comments. Yeah, there was a lot I'm trying, of guys. I'm trying to catch up. But I need the heat gun if you're not gonna. The heat gun or yeah, the blow dryer? Uh, the blow dryer, the heat gun is not as loud. Okay. So it's gonna I'll be that. right back. I'm going to get back to comments in just a second. Here, I'll answer comments just a while sec. I'm painting. All right, sit right here. It's perfect. They can see I can't you. sit right here. I'm still painting. Just flip it around. Oh, right. you're going to paint and answer comments. Girl, Look I, at her multi oh, wait, I can do this. You guys are going to get the back of my head because that's what I'm doing. But let's see. I think she said it was mint chip. Yes. So this color in here is mint chip. It's a really springy color. Um, have I ever thought or have I ever painted over hardboard? Yes, I have. I do like to use Fairy Chalk Mother's High Bond Primer when I'm painting anything that's like pressed wood or anything like that. It really helps that paint adhere. Um, Mary, if you have a question on the group, just email customercare at jamierayvintage.com and Caitlin will try to help you. We're actually planning on doing a video oh, for the public all about how to do all the things in the group because... You know, everybody has varying degrees of tech savviness, so we want to help everybody figure that out. Okay, let's see. Uh, I'm just seeing my first time ordering from you. What is the first thing I need? Um, Tracy, that's a good question. Depends on what you want to do. If you watch some of our DIY videos, we include all the supplies in there. So that's usually a great way to start. Find your favorite Jamie Ray project, and then I list the supplies at the end, and that will probably help you figure out what to buy. All right, Deb, you gonna get that blow dryer out? Yep, I got, a, I got an extension cord so I can reach all the places. All right, let's see. I'm just gonna go through here and see if there's any questions that we missed. Um. So, real quick, disclaimer, using the heat gun, not recommended. You can get chipping, crackle, and burn your paint. I'm an old pro at this. We do it a lot when we're in a hurry. And if we get that kind of crackle or chipping, we usually run with it because we like it. Um, do, I, do you have to use bond with milk paint? No, you don't have to use bond with milk paint. But um, you can get lots of chipping or all the chipping. So just think of bond as, no, just, just that part. Oh, you just want the center part. Okay. We're going to be stamping it. Oh, gotcha. Somebody asked if I was going to be blending this piece. I'm actually not. Um, we're going to stamp over the top of the mint chip. We're going to be using an IOD stamp and ink. And then I'm going to paint all, I'm going to hand paint around the edge so it gives it like a two tone look. And then I might come through with the chippy stamp and do mint chip chippy on the white, but that won't make it in the live video because. If I've got to let this dry more. So one of the tips, if you don't want your paint to get all burned and crackly or flake off, you move your heat gun real fast or your blow dryer. You can use a blow dryer too, but you see I'm not holding it in one spot. I'm just constantly moving it. It's going to dry it out pretty quick because this is like 500 degrees. 
at the tip of this, but it's not going to burn it because I'm moving it too quick. Hopefully that's not too loud. Can you guys still hear us all right? What do we clean our furniture with? Usually just Dawn soapy water, occasionally a Lysol wipe. <laughs> I've used scrubbing bubbles before. It just depends on what I have on hand. I've heard that uh, crud cutter is really awesome, but I have never personally used it. If something is really stinky, I suggest using um, a, what is, is it, shellac? Yeah, shellac it inside and out every inch of it, and it will be really, it'll really seal that in and then paint it. But it has to be inside and out, usually a couple coats. We got a new member, Tyra Ruiz. Hey, hey welcome. Everybody says they hear us just fine. Okay, good. I just want to make sure we don't, we don't like to use the noise, but it's really the only way that we're going to get to stamp it. It's the so, only way to do all the projects and show you what it looked like before, but still get it painted in a live video. <laughs> yeah, so the, the mint chip is going to dry, and then we're going to stamp uh, with a rose toile IOD stamp here. I'm going to move this over here because I feel weird talking and they can't see me. <laughs> There's like a little um, voice off the side of the camera. Uh, we're, <laughs> we're going to stamp over the mint chip, and then I will come back and I will paint the area around it white. Well, they don't need that much of me. They just need like a little bit. <laughs> Somebody said bye, Lisa. Oh, I'm going to have to catch the replay. It's almost 11. She's pretty tired. Woo, yeah, that's late. Must be East Coast. <laughs> I'm going to need a second job for her. Uh, Tracy says she's going to need a second job. What is the inside of the chest made up? It's kind of weird. It's so like, it's like a board. It's got like a pressed board that's stapled inside. I think it's cedar chip board. Oh, maybe. So we'll show you guys in a second what it looks it's like. It's not like your standard cedar chest, but they've stapled some cedar chip board in to kind of give it that cedar smell. Um, Mary De, De, De Marino, can you tell me the color I used for the chair at the beginning of the video? I actually missed a bunch of leftover paint for those, so I don't actually know, but it's pretty close to, I would say, Blue Green by Fairy Chuck Mother. It's, the color is blue green, but I, we probably should change that because we did, we get asked about those chairs all the time, and I'm always like, I don't know, leftovers. The guy I'm working with to see if he he's going to work for editing our videos suggested that we change it because we've used it so much. So. Yeah, we're gonna we're working on a new intro. If if okay, we'll ask you guys a question. If we were gonna do a new intro, what would you like to see in the intro? Like us painting, Seb and I, the kids. What do you want to see? It's a faux cedar chest. It, it really is the pine with like cedar chipboard lining. The chest was thirty dollars, Jimmy. Um, All right, I think that's good enough to stand. Do you need to strain the DIY paint when using the sprayer, like you did the chalk paint video? We never do, but you probably should. Occasionally, I do get chunks every now and then, but it's usually it's open. from the lip of the paint where it's got like dry crusties, and that falls in. So. Just Some, be warned. Somebody took these, they were like finished, used a different paint over the top on these chickens. Yep, they got like a matte paint on the, yeah. the comb and things. So you see that, that it's, it's cedar, but it's, it's, not it's like a chipboard in there. So um, I don't know. I don't know what they did or why they did it, but it works. It'll probably keep the moths out. Okay, so. All right, so we got this dry. It's, 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 it's very dry, it's actually warm. It's not cool to the touch. That's how you know if your paint's all the way dry, it'll still be cool to the touch if it's still wet underneath, but you can touch it. If it's still kind of cool, you can, even on a hot day, it'll be cooler. You can tell. All right, so we're going to use, we're using the IOD black ink, and we're using the rose toile, and we're just gonna keep it mounted on the backer board. Zeb's gonna do this for me. We're gonna ink the, we're gonna ink this, and then we're gonna put a design on this, a toile design. And the thing I like about leaving it mounted on the backer is you want toile should be very tight. It shouldn't be spread out, or it doesn't look correct. And once he's done doing the stamping, then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna very carefully outline this in white, and then this is gonna be white, and this is just gonna be a decorative middle. All right, so where do you want this? 
It's gonna be all over that middle thing. You like, want you want just like the whole thing on yeah, there? Yeah, just ink the whole thing, all put right. it down, and then just make sure it's all covered in the rose twelve. Okay, so I'm gonna see if I can bring you closer so you can see all the action happening. And then I'm gonna take my little French round and get around the edges, and then I'll paint that white. All and right, then I can so. See what it looks like. IOD black ink with the stamp pad. We've only refilled this a couple times. It doesn't take much ink. You can kind of see how it's it's still clear. It's not completely saturated. It goes a long way. All right, so I'm just tapping this on here and the ink is a, it's slightly oily, at least in my opinion to the touch. I don't know what it's actually made of. I'm not that smart. But it does have a, a longer open dry time more than paint, which is nice. Um, if you're using paint, it's gonna look more hand painted and you lose some of the detail. And if you use ink, as long as you don't shift, you're gonna get a very crisp detail. So if you want more of a crisp detail, then use ink on your stamps. And if you want it to look more hand painted, oh, I need to turn my phone off. If you want it to do more hand painted, then use the paint. And the other thing about using paint is you do have a lot more colors um, that you would have access to. So that's kind of fun. All right, I feel like that's pretty I don't know which well. Button to push stamped on there there we go okay you just want me to go over this whole thing just randomly like yeah. that right Oop, let's not go upside Can down you go though. random i'm just gonna put it on here yeah. and then maybe up here like this yeah don't worry about it and i'll wipe the ink off before i paint the black okay wow that's a lot of stamp we should have laid it on its side <laughs> on its back <laughs> yep that's hot all right over. hold don't move don't move your hands Stay, keep your hands tight okay, i'm just I'll... holding it in place while you okay Trial and error, seeing here first. <laughs> that wasn't my best face, sorry guys. It's okay if it's not a perfect image, because we're gonna just try We'll see it. if we got any ghosting, which is All what right. it looks like if you lift and then go back down. No, oh! Good. All right, now shift it a little so it's not a repeated pattern. Okay, so you guys saw me put the ink on. I'm gonna let you gaze at that for a minute while I reload this with the stamp pad. Any questions while we're doing this, Jamie? I don't know if there's questions. If I'll have to look in a minute. I wish it would like read the questions to us. <laughs> so I'm just gonna take a damp rag and kind of go around this edge and pull the ink off because I don't want it to get into my white paint. All right, so I think I almost want to kind of overlap it a little and maybe not get the wording on there. Yeah, I didn't want wording, a ton of wording on there. And the only reason I'm pulling this ink off is because I don't know how it will react with my paint and I don't want it to like turn my paint gray. So I'm just wiping the ink off. Well, that might be a little too, like try not to overlap the actual stamps. You overlap that one a little bit, that's okay. Sorry, we'll just stress it and it'll look great. Look old and aged. All right, boom, baby. All right, you just got that little. Okay. All right, reload. What movie is that from? Boom, baby. I don't know. It's the Disney movie. I can't remember. It's from Emperor's New Groove. Emperor's New Groove. That's what it is. Jack says it all the time. Boom, baby. Oh, which is funny because I don't think he's seen that movie. I think he has. Julia Traps, one of my favorite. So Disney's. what we're gonna do is once Zeb's done with that, I'm gonna take my. French round, and I'm going to go around this edge here with that, and then paint the middle in. So the idea with these stamps, they look better if you don't leave like a lot of void in between the stamps, if you fill it up, like so don't leave a lot of gap between them. So if you're gonna put do your own layout and not just use what's on the stamp, then keep them close and tight. So I think I'm gonna go at an angle just kind of like that there. I'm just gonna use my French round because it's good for detail work. And I just, I always hold my pinky up like this. Does anybody else do that? I don't know if it helps. But I just hold my pinky up and I'm just gonna basically trace the edges out. So that way I've got a crisper line here. And then I'll paint in the, kind of like when you were a kid and you used to color a crayon, color a book and you would trace the edges. So holding so. your pinky up, that, that gives you a point of contact for stability. 
oh, well, see, there you go. I didn't know. I just know that I do it. I do it when I draw with pencils. I've never really done it much painting. Well, I'm two-toning this, so. People ask me, like, do you tape it off to two-tone it? Whenever I two-tone, I just do it by hand. And I used to think people were crazy when they said they did that, but it's really the easiest way. So have you got questions? We got a new member, Old Stage Resale and Appliance Moss Point MS. Awesome. For all the members, we're going to do a live Tuesday video because we do our lives on days that we don't do our regular channel videos. And we're going to be doing Instagram. So we're going to be covering how to grow that. We just hit 20,000 on Instagram, so that's kind of fun. This is a weird angle. Linda Woods, would this ink be the same as used in stamping, etc.? Uh, I've used a few different stamp inks, and this, this feels like it's a little more... I don't know, it stays open longer. Like other stamp inks, they feel like they dry out faster to me than this does. It, it allows you to uh, have more time to get the whole stamp covered and work with it. Yeah, it's, it's kind of like how every paint is different. You could use any ink that you want. We just prefer this. This ink you can also use on fabric and heat set it with an iron, so that's kind of fun. I have to go slow. I'm not, this is not my best skill. Get a little paint on Oh, it. Queen Bee Trending Home Fashions. She asked earlier, but was having connection issues. Yes, the mold putty that we've got on the website is what I use to make, make appliques with. I use them to make hundreds, if not thousands of appliques yeah. before exact we started selling the molds. And we kind of got away with that. I like the molds a lot better. It's easier. If <laughs> but you guys... if you need that unique piece, the mold, the mold putty works really, really well. Also, it works great if you want to start like taking antique and vintage pieces and making your own molds and then reselling the appliques. We sold hundreds of appliques when we used to sell them. They were right. a good money maker for us, especially if you sell to a bunch of other refinishers that don't necessarily want to make their own. Tyro Ruiz has a question. Is there a reason why you guys use orbital sander over the squared finishing one? So in our experience, well, mine mostly, I, I uh, we get squiggles it. more with the square finishing sander um, than we do with the orbital sander. And I feel like the orbital, if you're using like a lower grit sandpaper, like 80, let's say you got to strip off a tabletop that's all crusty and old because you're going to restain it. I feel like it takes the... I take takes like the old finish off a lot better than like a square one too. I don't know. It's, I think it's just personal preference. If you like a square one, go for it. But we need to get I really a, we need to get love a the orbital sander, like a little mouse one. We don't have one. Yeah, I really love the orbital sanders for lots of reasons. And that's one of them. I feel like it takes the paint off better too. All right, guys, I'm almost there. <laughs> I have ADD, so doing stuff like this is like slow is painful to me. They're liking it. Good. I'm, I'm gonna move it back just a little. I All right, well, I'm like done with that portion. I feel like it's weirdly focusing on the back of your head and not what you're working on. Well, I'm I'm done with the the detail work, so now I'll just take. So this. now you're just gonna put lots of awesome. paint on. Yeah, now I'm just gonna fill in the gaps. All right, I'm gonna paint this chicken black while you do that. All right, I think there's a little black dress in there. Okay. This reminds me of. Like when you see a piece of furniture and then it's like painted white and then it's got rose toile fabric. It's like mimicking toile fabric, which I think is fun. Very French country. All right. Is there like if there's French country in France, do they have American country? I don't think so. <laughs> These are the kinds of things that I think about. I think they just stick with farmhouse on that. Yeah, farmhouse is American country. Welcome, Cricket Harrington. You may be a long-lost relative. Yeah, well, Harrington's my maiden name. The only problem is, now I got this weird line. I'm going to have to push hard to, like, get rid of the line from... All right, can you guys see? I'm trying to let you guys see what Jamie's doing, and you I'm... guys are going to see my hands over here. I'm just painting this white, so I don't know how exciting that is. But you guys can see what, I think without understanding the context of painting the background white, you didn't quite understand what was going on there. This would also be very pretty to do with the kindness regard stamp or like the alphabet, like the typesetting. 
A bunch of random out, like letters and numbers would be cool too. I'm painting left-handed, no judgments. I'm right-handed, so you know this will be what it is. I paint with both hands because I have arthritis, and so if one hand starts cramping up, uh, just paint with the other hand. So this is DIY in little black dress. It is probably the darkest, blackest DIY color. Yeah, it is. If and you want even more black, I feel like Best Black by Fair Chocolate is even more black, but in the DIY line, it is the darkest. And the cool thing I like about stamping over DIY paint is you get like these lines, which kind of aids your stamp because the DIY paint has so much texture in it. So it's kind of fun. You guys can see how well that's covering. Look at that. One coat, I'm going to be done. Well, also, like, the piece that you're painting does not have any shine to it. No, it's very, it's so very flat. So it does help get better. If your piece isn't shiny, you're going to get way better coverage. So that's something to keep in mind. Oh, Plant Bar AZ watching. And Dave Vester, what? Dave Plant Vester Bar is a has, friend from way back. If you guys haven't subscribed to Plant Bar AZ, they got their first video up. They're trying to get to 1,000 subs. And we're going to be doing some collabs with them. So definitely subscribe to their channel. And if you're from Arizona, stop by. You can check out the January Vintage stuff. You can plant some stuff at the bar. All right. I'm going to get this piece done. I'm not going to lie, guys. This is not easy painting this sideways with my left hand so you can see it. <laughs> it is, it is nerve-wracking. I'm much better at painting when I'm not live because but, I'm always trying to like not put my bum in the camera. And I'm really liking how it's kind of picking up the detail on the face, though, more than the red was. Isn't it funny how some paint does that? And then when you distress it, like, pokes it even more. You can kind of see the line from where I, like, went around the edge. But when I get the second coat on this, you're not going to see that line. New member, Tracy Bross. All right. Okay, let me wipe this ledge off because I want to put the top down so you guys can see the contrast. <laughs> Everybody's sad we didn't buy the artichoke. <laughs> it didn't have a bottom. It was weird. It was just, if it had had like a square or rounded bottom from with more detail. Oh, wait, it's going to be loud. Oh. Sorry. All right, that now you can really see. Loud. Sorry. I had to let it go. Let it go. Now you can see the contrast. You see what we're doing here? We got the dark twall, and then we got the dark top, and then the white here, and then... We'll wind up doing probably two, one more coat, maybe two more coats of the beadboard. White usually takes two to three coats for good coverage because obviously whites don't have as much pigment. And then I'll distress it and possibly use the chippy stamp in the mint color to make it look like mint paint is chipping through on the white. We haven't done that. So maybe we'll even do a video, yeah, of, of the chippy stamp. Yeah. Yeah, we could do that Monday, actually. Monday video. We're so, also, next week, we've looked into bleaching and some techniques. We're going to be practicing. So hopefully we might have a video towards the end of the week. It takes a little bit of time. you got to do, like, layers of it and let it dry and more layers and let it dry. So we're going to try that out on a dresser. So hopefully we have a video of bleaching wood out right next week as well. Um, we have lots of positive feedback on our blog, our blog style video, so we're going to try to do that. Okay. All right. I think we're good. What time is it? We got like five, nine, ten, ten minutes. minutes. All right. I'll answer questions. Okay. I've got to paint the back of this before. They like how it's coming out. Oh, good. I know it looks weird because it's kind of splotchy, but I promise you once, once it's... Yeah, once the second coat of white goes on there. Once the second coat goes on there, it'll look better. All right, I'm coming around. Oh, we got another member. I'm coming around the mountain when I come. I may have already said it. What? Unless it was new. Elaine Morris. Elaine is my middle name. So we had somebody that was Harrington that joined? Mm -hmm. Or that was just commenting? That was their last name. Oh, fun. Okay, let's see. Been looking for artichokes. I thought you bought it. Nope, sorry. Let's see. 1110. Those uh, Eastern Time people are feeling it right now. I think everybody is good. Can you explain how to put the info on Instagram pictures? Um, yeah, uh, we'll go into more depth with it on our live video. But if you have a website through Shopify, 
it's just integrated that way. Or if you have an Etsy store, I believe it integrates with that too. I don't have an Etsy store, so I don't know. But the way I add like the little sellable tags that take you to my website is because my website is um, through Shopify. All right, talk loud. Why are you gonna blow dry that? Because I'm gonna wet distress it before we go. Well, but what am I gonna talk about? Talk about the fact I'm that- I'm sure you can scroll up and find stuff I haven't I answered. I already did. I, Kelly says she loves the way it's turning out. Red on the rooster comb. I think we're just gonna wet distress it. Well, it's already red underneath, so it should bring a lot of that detail out. And you'll see it kind of, it'll go from a little bit shiny more to the matte color that's kind of truer to what it would be if you didn't seal it. Then if you seal it, it'll get it'll shine up again. Oh, uh, Deb's Oregon is doing lots of projects and layering the chippy great results. So are you using the chippy stamp? Because I haven't used it, so... We've used it a couple times, like have practicing, we? but never like... I don't even think we have a chippy stamp open, do we? Yeah, but we don't have a chippy stamp video. Oh. It's time. What will I need to seal the center of the chest? We'll seal everything probably with like a Sweet Pickens Top Coat or a DIY Big Top. And, or you could use clear wax. So you would seal this just like you seal everything else. So if you guys saw the video earlier today, we finished the milk cans. I sealed those with DIY Big Top. I did spray it, same as I do the top coat. But it, I don't know if you saw, it was a lot shinier than the Big Top is. So that's why we do the Big Top a lot when we spray, because it leaves more of a matte finish. Whereas if you want a shinier look, say for like a tabletop or something, the, the Big Top is your answer for that. So somebody asked if I stained the top. I did not stain it. That is just DIY paint layered chocolate, which looks very similar to like a gel stain. It's very matte right now, but when I seal it, it'll get some shine. And what I'm going to do, I can't lift this because it's super heavy, but on this inside, when it's all done, I'm gonna have Zeb unscrew the hinges and I will paint the inside the same as this top. So that way when you lift it up, there's not like this weird like line from where the paint stops. See, can you see the line? I don't know. There you go. So, right. Wet distress the rooster. We're getting wet distress. I'm just gonna start by hitting him light, see what comes off. Terry says she used the mermaid mold for the first time. That's a fun one. Um, okay, so we get asked this a lot. Not all paints will wet distress and not all paints wet distress super easy. Out of all the paints we carry, DIY wet distress is the easiest. And the reason why you can do this is because it's water soluble paint, which means until you seal it, or if you, if you let it sit for 30 days, you're not gonna be able to wet distress it. But until it's cured or sealed, water will take the paint off. So you can use water instead of sandpaper. And then we'll come back over this with either a clear wax or a top coat. And once we do that, then you could no longer seal it. If you're just using like an acrylic craft paint or a latex paint, you're not going to be able to wet distress because that paint is not water soluble. Also, fairy chalk leather will wet distress, but not so much as this. And sweet pickens is somewhere in the middle. Um, the thing sweet about, pickens will crackle a lot. Yeah, <laughs> when you wet distress sweet pickens, it will make it chip and crackle. So be careful with that. I, I like it, so I don't mind if it chips and crackles, but just a heads up with that. Okay, can you use the same sprayer for paint and top coat? Yes, you just need to clean out your spray gun very, very well and make sure that there's no paint left in it when you're putting the top coat. I painted some shutters with milk paint before the winter left them all, all winter in the snow and wetness. They turned out super cute, so with all 10 of them today. That is smart. I should have done that. <laughs> I know I have actually, I have lots of furniture in my house that I never bother to seal and I just let it naturally age and chip over time and I like it. Do I paint the inside of chests? Nope. Unless they're like gross on the inside then I might. In this case, I'm just gonna paint the inside of the lid. Well, and if you paint them and they're like a cedar chest, they lose kind of that, the, what the cedar does for them. The cedar has an oil in it that repels a lot of bugs and moths and things. People said they didn't think they were going to love the rooster black, but they're liking it. Here's the thing. This is going to go in our retail space, and we have lots of white, lots of apothecary, and a bunch of colors. And having a few pieces done in black is like a nice relief. And the fun thing is when you wet distress it, then the color that's underneath kind of peekaboos through the black. It kind of reminds me of, you know, when you're a kid and you would like paint, and then you would do black. Is it black paint or black crayon? 
take oh, the black yeah. crayon off and the colors were underneath. <laughs> Do I carry chalk paint, the paint that you can write on with a white chalk? Nope. But I have used the DIY and not sealed it and used that on chalkboards. So just use DIY a little black dress and then let it dry for 24 or 48 hours, then use a white piece of chalk to season it, and I've used that for chalkboards before. I actually like it better than chalkboard paint because I feel like chalkboard paint can be kind of peely, if that makes sense. It's like plasticky to me. I can't believe no one has bought the white dresser with the applique. Oh, the white dresser with the transfer on it? Do I have a white dresser with the applique? I don't think so. I have a white dresser with a transfer, and I don't know why it hasn't sold either. I like that one. Oh, yeah, the one with the flowers? Yeah. All right, so here's the distressed look. It's very subtle, but kind of gives it like a really aged, crusty look. It's been in the back of someone's barn forever. Once it's sealed, the color will pop more, too. Yeah, the reds will pop more out more in the yellow. And the black will be much, much darker because clay paint dries lighter and then gets darker when it's sealed, where a lot of paint dries darker. It's the clay. All right, guys. I think that's it for tonight's creations. We will see you back again Monday. If you're not channel members and you want to get that corbel pattern, the link is in the description below, or if you're not on an iPad or an iPhone, the join button will be up there by the subscribe tab on the homepage of our channel. Yep, and we will finish this up on Monday and do an edited video for you. Be sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to Jamie Ray Vintage for more DIY. DIY, what's here, up? Here, one last glimpse. If you, if you tuned in late, that's the corbel pattern. I think it's going to be really cool. I can't wait for you to cut that one out. Yep, that's going to be a fun one. Bye, All right, guys.